Welcome to Electra Online. Here in this video we're going to try to explore something interesting. We've heard a lot about dark energy and dark matter, but maybe there is an explanation as to why the universe and especially space itself is expanding. It requires energy and nobody seems to know what that energy might be, so therefore we call it dark energy, but we don't know what dark energy is, what it looks like, what form it takes, but we do know the energy that currently is in the universe and we know the energy that was in the universe at the beginning of the Big Bang. How do we know that? Well, we currently know that the number of CMB photons per cubic centimeter in space is 400. So there are 400 CMB photons in a cubic centimeter, which means that in a cubic meter there are 400 million CMB photons today traveling in all directions. But 13.7 billion years ago, space was only one billion today's volume, which means that 13.7 billion years ago, at decoupling, the universe was a lot more dense, and also the photons, the CMB photons, were a lot more dense, and they were a lot more energetic because they had a lot shorter wavelengths. So that means that 13.7 billion years ago, the density of CMB photons was 400 million per cubic meter times a billion, or 4 times 10 to the 17 photons per cubic meter. We know that the energy back then, per photon, is H times F, where H is Planck's constant and F is the frequency of oscillation, which is also the same as HC over lambda, the speed of light divided by the wavelength. I like that formula better because it's easier to calculate. So we take Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength of one of those CMB photons 13.7 billion years ago, which was approximately a micrometer, 1 times 10 to the minus 6 meters, which means that back then each photon contained the energy equivalent of 2 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per photon, which is a little bit less than a light photon. So now, if we then convert that to the amount of energy per cubic meter, knowing how many photons there were back then per cubic meter, we have an energy content of 0 0.08 joules per cubic meter. Now you may say, well, that doesn't sound like a lot. 0 0.08, that's less than a tenth of a joule per cubic meter, but there are a lot of cubic meters in the universe. And again, it's the visible, current visible universe, but back then it contained a lot more space because space was a lot more compressed and dense and a lot more CMB photons. Everything is spread out a billion fold now in volume. So how many cubic meters are there in the visible universe? Well, the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi times r cubed and r, the radius, is 13.7 billion light years, 10 to the 9 light years. Of course, we want to convert that to meters, and the light year is 9.42 times 10 to the 15 meters. We have to cube that so we can convert. That means currently, in the visible universe, in the observable universe, which was back then filled with a lot more CMB photons, was equal to 9 times 10 to the 78 cubic meters. So we multiply the energy per cubic meter times how many cubic meters there are in the universe, that means in the visible universe, the energy of CMB radiation back then, after decoupling, 380,000 years after the Big Bang, was 7.2 times 10 to the 77 joules. Seems like a big number, but what does that really mean? Well, then I calculated how much energy our sun will put out in its 10 billion year lifespan. The sun had been around for almost 5 billion years. It'll keep doing this for another 5 billion years. So how much energy will the sun put out in 10 billion years as a main sequence star? Well, the current energy output per second is 3.9 times 10 to the 26 joules. There's 86,400 seconds in a day, 365 days in a year, and the sun will last for 10 billion years, which means the sun will put out 1.23 times 10 to the 44 joules in its entire lifetime. Now compare this number to this number. When I divide that, the total amount of energy in the CMB radiation, by the energy output of the sun, which is bigger than the typical star, we would need 5.8 times 10 to the 33 stars, the size of the sun. And let's say there's 100 billion sun-like stars in our galaxy. 
If you divide that by 100 billion, you would have to divide that by 1 times 10 to the 11th, you still end up with 5.8 times 10 to the 22 galaxies, which is way more galaxies than there currently are in the visible universe, because there's only about 200 billion. Wow. The amount of energy in the CMB radiation 13.7 billion years ago was the equivalent of a billion times as many galaxies as we currently have in our visible universe. The energy output of all the stars and all the galaxies multiplied times a billion. There was an enormous amount of energy in the CMB radiation. Now what happened to that energy? Well, since the universe expanded and now the wavelengths are a thousand times as long, the energy content has dropped to 0.1% of what it was at the beginning of the universe. So essentially all that energy has been lost. Well, we know that energy can be lost. It has to be used for something. So perhaps it's the CMB energy transformation from what it was then to what it is now that was the impetus to expand space itself. Maybe that energy we need for the expansion of space it isn't as dark as we think it is. It might actually be the CMB radiation. Well, it's a thought. Can prove it. But it's interesting. There was a lot of energy in that CMB radiation that is now by and large gone because the expansion of the universe, the expansion of space itself. So maybe it's that CMB radiation energy loss that catapulted the universe in that massive expansion that it experienced over the last 13.7 billion years. It is a thought. The numbers seem to make sense that it's plausible. Something to think about. What do you think?